Chapter 4, Preparation, Setting and Achieving Realistic Goals. So important. What we're doing is we're preparing for long-term success. Again, reading from the book, What Works When Diets Don't, but I'm also adding a lot of new information that's came out over the last few years. So as we go through this book, I'm going to recap when we get to the food section, I'm going to recap some things, add some new things. So I'm hoping you, you know, after you hear something three or four times, it will really sink in. So I'm not doing one chapter on this, another chapter on this. I'm actually trying to, to weave them together uh, to give you a really good success, successful plan. So let's talk about preparation because that is the key. What I mean by preparation is, you know, you've heard all the sayings. If you prepare to fail, uh, you probably will, meaning if you don't do anything, you, you'll succeed at that. Nothing will get done. And so we do have to prepare, especially for the weight loss process, getting in health, getting in good health, better health. Um, just off the top of my head, when it comes to this topic, um, a few things really stand out. Um, number one, it's a process and we've got so much marketing out there. Uh, you know, lose 30 pounds in 30 days. Uh, just take this, this, this new medication, uh, wear this belt, try this new piece of home equipment. Um, you know, I can get you in shape in six weeks if you purchase this program. And so part of the weight loss process and even health, you know, I've learned this over the years. I helped a lot of weight loss clients early on. Um, usually, I'd say most of the time, we set not unrealistic goals, but we set um, markers or dates on calendars that are just just too soon. You know, we, we, we would really like this to happen. You know, people start to get ready for summer in May. Uh, usually by then it's a little too late. And I don't think we should get ready for summer and, and look at my body and my six pack. I think it's a year round lifestyle. Um, and of course, some people want to lose a little bit more weight in the summer, but you really want to start that uh, by January. That's why January 1st, New Year's resolutions, um, you know, just to, if you need to shed some winter weight, um, it's a process. So that was my point. It's a process. Um, it takes time. I know people start eating healthy and they actually feel worse. The reason they feel worse is they are withdrawing just like a, a drug addict. You know, when you try to come off lots of sodium processed foods, even especially sodium nitrates, uh, especially the, the food coloring, the artificial flavoring, uh, the different, they do put different chemicals, especially in fast food to, that draws you into that food. You know, so the more you when you try to come off of these things, you're going to feel foggy, lightheaded, headache, especially, you know, weaning off caffeine, alcohol, I mean, you name it. So we have to be prepared that it's a process and it's not going to feel better. Uh, you're not going to feel better right away. It's, it's setting, okay, let me, let, me, let me get through this first. I say let me get through this first two weeks you know, of, of getting off of these things. And usually it's going to take a good month. But then you set these patterns up uh, for the rest of your life that will, will be very helpful. So um, preparing is, is key. Without that, um, you know, if I'm eating, trying to eat better, I know it's going to take some time because internally, the, the, the plethora of cells and the microbiome, it's this very small world and very tiny particles, and it takes time to change those things. Uh, and so setting, yourself, setting your sights on the long run, hey, this is my lifestyle. Sure, I might have a cookie now and then. I might eat out now and then. I might, but this is my lifestyle, and I'm changing from the inside out. I'm, I'm, I'm working on uh, the long term. And so realistic goals, uh, let's say, hey, I want to lose 10 pounds. You know, and depending on how hard I was going to go at it, you know, I give myself a good two month process, you know, limiting cal calories. And I'll talk about that more, uh, more intermittent fasting, some more activity. But then I want to keep that weight off. So, again, we have to be strategic. So when establishing a goal, it is crucial to plan for the future and to prepare for the present. You've made the choice to change. You've acquired a better understanding of how your body works and you're learning to choose self-discipline over re regret. Now it's time to design a plan. And again, I'll probably talk more about uh, dieting and different things, what type of foods as we go through uh, the chapters. Um, but it, I did talk about a lot, of, a lot of this at the beginning too. So the challenge for me is all of these, we are turning in, this book we're turning also into probably 15 to 20 different podcasts. So I want to make sure um, that I do repeat myself on some important information. Having a plan is essential, uh, but it's of no importance if you're not prepared. Prepared for what? Prepared for the unseen circumstances, uh, illness, 
injury and the challenging but rewarding opportunities ahead. In other words, you know, okay, I'm going to do this in, you know, three months and then we get hit with, um, you know, for me, I pulled my hamstring very bad. Or let's say you crash on your bike or you get sick, you're down for 10 days, two weeks with the flu, you know, you get, you get back on, on track. And I will say those actually, um, yeah, it, it, they are setbacks, but I also look at them as stepping stones and opportunities. And what I mean by that is, okay, let's say I'm feeling down with the cold or flu, whatever. This is not the time to pig out on ice cream and junk food. Uh, it's actually the time to fast. So, you know, if you're feeling that way, this is the time I would, I would consider some water fasting or some, maybe some mineral, min, minimal nutrients, definitely some electrolytes. Um, and you let that, that downtime with your body actually be a time of healing not a time of, of pigging out. That's my beef with the hospitals and, you know, coming out of heart surgery and here's your Sunday and shake and or chocolate shake or hamburger. It's just, you know, I wish hospital food was a lot better for people. Uh, we'd be doing much better uh, as we help people recover. Many lose interest in exercising and eating correctly uh, because they are not prepared for the interruptions and the distractions that can break a routine. And I, this happens to me all the time. Um, you know, especially, okay, working out good. Uh, in the morning, I try to get it done and then all hell breaks loose. we got family issues, kids are sick. And then so you, you stay focused on the goal. Um, you don't allow the setbacks to knock you off course. They might detour you for a little bit. They might slow you down. But, you know, ultimately a successful weight loss program will be, um, will be that in which we stay focused on our goals and the long-term benefits, regardless of our situation. People fail at weight loss, not because they're defeated, but because they quit. So that's nine times out of 10. This is too hard. I'm not seeing the results I wanted. You know, I quit. And the irony is I've worked with people, you know, um, you know, they would come, we would, you know, I, I don't recommend more than once a week, but we, you know, we'd weigh ourselves or they'd weigh themselves man, it's been a week and I weigh the same. My goal is weight loss. Well, is your goal weight loss or is your goal fat loss with muscle retention? Uh, and depending how, if they've never worked out, you can definitely, you know, put on not that much weight, uh, not too much muscle in a week, but um, the body chemically, uh, organically, uh, cellularly is changing. And so they could actually lose a half inch on their waist and maintain their weight. What happens is again, depending on how much water, if they're eating better, um, you know, and start taking electrolytes, more magnesium, potassium, sodium, I'm drinking more water. As a result, the body is storing more water. So there's a fuller feeling. And uh, actually when water is stored, it's stored as a, it's not, it's not lean muscle mass, but it's measured as lean muscle mass. So, um, Hey, my body weight is the same five pounds, or I even went up a pound. And uh, this isn't working. No, there's a lot of change going on and you're, you're changing the composition of your body. Uh, now, ultimately, if weight loss is the goal, then, um, you know, that, that would be something to consider too. Maybe again, like what I talked about, maybe a, a 500 calorie, 600 calorie diet for a while, high protein, God-given food, and just a, kind of a fasting mimicking mode. And it, there's so many different variables. It really depends on your own personal goals and I take things to the Lord and prayer, Lord, show me, and maybe God will bring a book uh, into your life or a person or this podcast, and it'll really confirm what, uh, what he's already doing in your heart. Um, so that's why a lot of people get discouraged. They don't see the results. And my flabby, you know, my flabby arm, you know, it comes back here, uh, mainly on women. Hey, this isn't, this isn't improving as quickly as I thought. And so it takes time. Um, and a lot of times if there's loose skin, that's a whole different issue. And, um, you know, we also have to have our sights set on realistic. Uh, we're not going to look like our favorite celebrity, and our goal shouldn't be that. So let me give you a case in point. Lisa was discouraged. I think I remember the situation years ago. She was a 38-year-old mother of two. She wanted to lose 20 pounds in three months. She had a plan, work out six times a week, one hour each time, and consume 1,400 healthy calories a day. Theoretically, this could work, but life happens. So again, I want to interject a lot of times... Um, as I will begin quoting a little bit, Benjamin Bickman, Dr. Bickman, uh, as this, as this book goes on, you know, he talks a lot about, you know, it's, it's hormones, not necessarily calories, um, because hormones like insulin control, uh, insulin, glucagon, um, you know, they, they, they control, uh, uh, how the food is processed, energy stored, energy burned. That's how Ozempic plays a role as well, um, in that. And so, I'm kind of divided because 
I, I know that if a person, um, you know, we consume too many calories, regardless of our, if our, if we're insulin, see, you have insulin resistance. So you're resistant. It's not real good. And you have insulin sensitivity. So I'm real sensitive to insulin, which is, which is better. You know, obviously that's going to play a huge role, but if we take in more energy, then, you know, it, it is stored regardless of level of, in, I don't think insulin can burn 5,000 calories. Um, if we only need three as an example, but anyway, that's a good plan. And also remember working out, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I was like 50, 50 and then 60, 40 on working out and diet. Now I'm more like 80, 20. Uh, I think diet and nutrition is 80% of your goal and working out will be 20%. And there are studies. And I, I, I explained this earlier on in the book that I, I would see people, I mean, I'm talking thousands of people week in and week out, month in and month out at the gym, never changed ever. They were working out six days a week, hard, never changes because their diet did not change. And that really is the key. So let's go back to Lisa. She had a plan, but life happens. Within the first three weeks, one child became ill and her car, car, car needed repairs. Frustrated and off course, she consumed more than her body needed and binged and uh, wasn't able to exercise and kind of fell back into what a lot of us do. You know, forget it. It's not worth it. Actually, it is. You can still, you can still move forward. Uh, even with this type of, of thing going on in your, in your life. Uh, as a result, um, she only lost two pounds within the first month instead of her goal of six or seven. Uh, the second month brought even more challenges. The babysitter canceled twice and Lisa had to attend uh, functions, work longer hours, uh, so many different things. Um, and, and she lost two additional pounds instead of the six that she had hoped for again that month. And uh, she didn't even make it to the third month. Discouraged, she quit. Boy, isn't that true? Uh, she was not prepared for the unseen circumstances. So to me, I look at these things not as setbacks, but as stepping stones. Okay, you know, um, for example, let's say I have to, man, workload, or I've got to make a lot of calls or whatever, you know, even with the, what they call Bluetooth earbuds, you know, there's some radiation concerns. So maybe your phone on speaker, but I'll, I'll do some calls and I'll walk for an hour. And I just burned, you know, three, 400 calories. I feel great. I'm walking. So you have to be strategic in this, again, it has to be a lifestyle. Um, so she quit, uh, and she didn't realize a simple readjustment in her goal and attitude would have brought success. But we often look for excuses to continue in our harmful life down a harmful down the road of a harmful lifestyle rather than a way out. So excuses must end by gradually losing weight. Lisa could have still reached her goal. Remember, she had already lost four or five pounds and probably adjusted her her um, muscle mass index and things like that in a positive light. Uh, in allowing more time, she would have encouraged the development of new enduring patterns. Being prepared and setting realistic goals would have probably meant Lisa's success and not her failure. Again, I'm not a fan of always monitoring calories because it can become a form of dieting and it's not always, it's about calories. Some people eat uh, too little. And if they get stuck on that mode, their metabolic rate slows down, the nutrient deficiencies are pretty evident. Um, but we've got to have a balanced approach. Uh, and that's why some days, you know, if let's say my goal is 1800 to 2400 calories, if I'm losing or 2200, if I'm losing weight, you know, it's my goal. Sometimes I'll end up eating 3500 on a day. You know, if I start, I mean, if I have early morning breakfast, 800 calories, good calories, but then later in the day and we're busy, um, and that's okay. I get back on track. It, it's kind of good to keep your body guessing, uh, hormonal adjustments. Uh, it's not used to a set pattern because it will, it will set the pattern. If you get in a set pattern and then it, you got to try to break out that set point and that becomes difficult too. So I know a lot of this is confusing. Where do I start again? Moderation, God given food in moderation, move more, take it to prayer and fasting. And, and I, I think really you can see huge results and we know what to do. Hey, I, I sh for me, I should not be eating after five. Uh, I don't need that extra serving. Uh, I don't need to stop and get a big chocolate bar. Uh, and I, I justify it by, Hey, it's organic cacao. Um, you know, man, this is good. But the caffeine, the, uh, the, 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 the big dark, dark chocolate, you know, probably 300 calories plus dip it in some uh, almond butter, you know, there's 500 calories I didn't need. And then kind of out my dorm, a little bit hungry, instead of just drinking some water, I'll grab, you know, just a handful of nuts are healthy. Well, there's 250 calories. So I just had 700 calories that I probably shouldn't have had. So anyway, being prepared uh, means being prepared for setbacks. Um, in Lisa's case, she could have still eaten very clean and incorporated intermittent fasting, which would have given her energy and weight loss and a good 
positive attitude for her forward momentum. And that is so important because forward momentum, even if it's a little, like if I wake up and say, yeah, I did pretty good yesterday, you know, and I feel good. I want to keep going. I want to keep, you know, doing that versus if we blow it at night, some of you, if you drink or this or the, and you get up and just like, forget it. And then you just get stuck in a pattern of defeat and you can't break out of that. It just takes a little bit of time. Again, the best preparation is to decide that you'll move forward regardless of your situation. Be prepared for a slow, but steady pace. Weight loss is a gradual process. Boy, if I could that, I even have a hard time remembering that. And I know that, you know, I, I know it's because if you understand at the cellular level, even a decrease of 500 calories, and if all those 500 calories are, uh, fat is being burned, you know, the body, sometimes it burns, I'm sure some protein through gluconeogenesis, it might obviously suck up your carbohydrates, your glucose stored in your muscle and liver, and then maybe it'll get some fat if it needs it, unless you're in a ketogenic state. But, um, you know, 500 calories, let's say of just fat per day, you're only burning a pound of fat a week, which is really good. But it's a, if I lost a pound of fat, I probably couldn't even tell. You know, it's a process. It, it takes time. And many give up simply because they are not prepared for the time it takes to lose weight. If you have a financial setback and can't afford healthy food, you can still eat God-given food God's way. This is so important. So let me just um, talk about this, um, this, this uh, Lisa case in point for a minute, because she could have just readjusted everything and got back on, tra on track the next day. And hopefully she did. I, I don't, haven't talked to her in a long time, but I'm hoping she did because you can prepare yourself not only physically, but mentally as well. Another, I, I'm hoping I'll talk about this, but another part about preparation is, you know, if you have your food already prepared, like right now, I've got some um, brown rice or some black beans, organic, already mixed with some ground turkey for the next couple of days. And then you have pre-made salads and you have uh, maybe some organic yogurt that you can mix with some Manuka honey and some fruit and uh, some, so you have, everything's kind of already ready. It's, it's, it's to me, that's it, to me, fast food is not fast. Uh, if you already take some time, you get set, you're already, it, it, it's, it's not difficult. It's like, Oh man, that must be hard. You got to do this. You got to do this to me. It's, it flows very nicely with my lifestyle, but you do have to prepare, prepare mentally as well. For example, um, it may take four, six, eight, 12 or, or more months to lose, you know, 40, 60 or a hundred pounds or more, depending again on food choices, activity level, so many different things. So set a goal to lose three to five pounds the first month and focus on nothing but reaching that goal. Again, seeking God first, putting things in perspective, make sure you have the pri right priorities. You also don't want to let your new endeavor, uh, affect your family too much. You know, I've learned the lesson the hard way. If, if, if you're always fasting, always eating healthy, always nitpicking, um, and that's hard for me. You know, even right now, we've got some unhealthy cereal in the house and I don't say anything or some crackers and chips, you know, with some seed oils and things. And it's like, you know, they know where I stand and, and, and I just don't say much. Um, but I think my lifestyle is also affected, at least right now, a couple of my kids for the better. Um, so focus on reaching your goal and then adjust it. Okay, next month I'm going to adjust it. I've been spending some time with God in prayer. I really need to fast. You know, there's a lot of things you can do. Uh, you break the, the large goal, what I do, into small goals. So I don't focus on, even now, you know, I don't know when you'll be listening to this. I don't know. You know, this is June 2024, and I went from around 220 pounds uh, earlier in the year to now like 205, 206 207. Again, I don't, I don't weigh myself too much, but I really, to be really operating, I mean, when I felt my best is at my high school weight, 195, 6'2", 195. So that's going to be another 12 pounds. Um, and you know, I think it's my goal and not only weight loss look better. I don't, I don't know. I think I'd actually look better, a little heavier, I guess people, my wife and prefer, you know, um, built and, and, and not, not, not overly overweight, but just, you know, heavier kind of goes with my calling as, as preaching and things, but longevity feeling better, you know, the, the more weight I lose, I tend to just feel better uh, because you think about, you know, I think it's one mile of blood vessels are created for a pound of, of body weight. Uh, even the, the, the impact on your joints, uh, lower back uh, inflammation. And, and so my goal is to still keep going, but uh, it's not easy because my body has hit a set point. And I'll talk about that later. Set point is when your body says, we're set. Don't, don't try to mess with me. And that's when you either have to manipulate diet somehow or increase the intensity, uh, 
or le length of your activity. And we'll talk about that later. Uh, but don't cut quarters. Don't compromise your health. Don't use stimulants and weird diets. Um, even if you maintain your, we your weight for a week or two or a month, don't get frustrated. You're going in a good direction. Uh, we, we, we've got to get away from this microwave form of weight loss that just push a, push a couple buttons, take a couple pills. Even peptides are huge right now. People are wanting to get on peptides. I've talked about Ozempic. I think it's, it's one form of a peptide. It's glucagon, glucagon-like peptide. G I think it's called uh, GLP-1. Um, and um, five amino one MQ to BP, BPC one fifty seven, tesamorelin, ipamorelin, um, and some of those things, you know, and and uh, and we just get so focused on that. But I'm telling you, longevity and living longer, uh, these things might, you know, might have long term uh, effects uh, if you don't get these lifestyle changes in now. And we're looking for that quick, that quick, that quick. Um, and I'm not saying, you know, there might be a time for um, certain things, certain peptides, uh, and uh, maybe you need some testosterone replacement therapy to get you going or women hormone replacement therapy. But you want to you want to make sure you check the box for other things, too. For example, I can get somebody's testosterone level up pretty easily um, before they want to go into um, therapy, because remember, once you start that, usually you you um, you don't stop. You're on uh, synthetic testosterone, usually sipinate, um, 100 milligrams a week for a while, for the rest of your life. Um, you know, just by losing body weight, eating better, even, even some protein, some meat increases testosterone, getting them off alcohol, getting them off other things, getting off of maybe uh, weaning off some medication if they can, as they lose weight, getting them to exercise and move more and not watching junk at night all the time, get them in the word and get, and so this whole testosterone is a very interesting hormone because it's affected by a lot of different things. So if you can, you, you can put those things on your side. Um, and I think that's better. I think that's better than synthetic because you're doing it the natural right way. A friend of mine, um, he, he's pretty much completely whole plant-based, um, lost, you know, a good amount of weight. Um, he actually, his testosterone was like a thousand and he's 65, a thousand that's higher than mine. Uh, but you also have to look at free testosterone, you know, the, the availability of testosterone in the blood. I think his was still up there pretty good. And so, you know, it can be done. Um, again, uh, let's get back on track here for my weight loss goal. Um, in the past, and even now, I will take my time, exercise moderately, eat correctly, maybe 80, 90, 90% of the time, probably right now. Um, but I'll enjoy some food with friends. I'll, I mean, so to me, it actually, I don't feel, I don't feel restrained at all. People think, oh, in your prison or feel restrained. No, it's, it's, it doesn't, you know, sometimes we'll go to El Cor, El Cor, El, El Coronado or Coronado down in San Diego. Me and my wife like to do that maybe once a year. And there's some street taco. There's a place that serves the best street tacos I've ever had. I'll do that. And I uh, won't feel bad, but we're, we're usually on a walk and um, other places, um, you know, that just, um, you just live life. I just feel better. I, 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 I feel better. My skin's better. Um, I don't look my age. And uh, even though I feel my body falling apart, you know, there, there's a reward. And so I'm, I'm excited. I turned down to the, the Doritos and it said, grab some, um, maybe some, a few chips made with avocado oil and some berries and a little bit of protein. And I just, I just feel better. And so to me, it's not, it's, it's not hard. It's actually, it actually is easy and it feels better once you set that pattern, but it does take some time. So, um, eventually, you know, like, like many of you, I reached my weight loss goal. Uh, but then I did gain some, I'm talking now, this is probably 20 some years ago, you know, and then I gained some back. Um, and then I lost some more, you know, so I've, I've been on that diet yo-yo effect. Um, and it, it is challenging. So the extent of time it takes to reach your goal is going to help you develop a deeply ingrained habits that will help you stay focused on the goals. Ironically, when we choose God-given healthy food, not processed, boxed, or ultra. I mean, pro when I say processed food, I really mean ultra processed food because even Ezekiel bread is processed food. Even some things that are pretty healthy, you know, have been processed uh, because, you know, you process it. Even I think, you know, in the Bible, they would take the wheat and the chaff and they take the wheat and they grind it and they, they would mix it with the flour and whatever they did to make the bread. And so they were processing it, but it's the highly processed foods. You know, it's in a box that has zero. I mean, I have couscous in a box. Um, so, you know, you, you just use, use wisdom. Um, so when we choose God given healthy food in moderation, the body is more apt to lose weight. For example, if you're eating sugar throughout the day, guess what your body will crave sugar and it'll raise your insulin and insulin loves to store fat. 
Um, so many times when I avoid food all day and I eat a large healthy dinner later around five, I have no sugar cravings. Um, nor do I wake up in the night craving more food because I ate a lot of nutrient dense food. That's really the key. Cause if you're eating, let's say they grab some chips, maybe make a hot dog. That's not healthy. Uh, take some, uh, um, what do they call that meat? Um, not refined meat, but it's, 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 it's processed meat. I can't believe I don't know the name of that. I, I know the name. I just forgot. So you use this, let's say turkey ham. It's just tons of monosodium glutamate. You throw it on some white bread. I mean, you're just, you're not getting some good nutrients in it. Oh, well, but I'll, I'll put a tomato on there. Okay. Well, is it a fresh tomato? Is it sprayed with glyphosate? Um, you know, just, I'm just joking with you. I know it's hard to, hard to, uh, pinpoint all these things. So anyway, we talked here about preparing and motivation and different things. And we're going to move on to the next section here shortly.